Astrolo. Super Grant. And welcome back, buddies. And welcome back to Sure It'll Be Grand with uh, me, Daniel, and Owen over here. I should have done that the other way around. It's not very polite in grammatical and syntax uh, laws. But welcome back to Sure It'll Be Grand. Uh, Owen, say hello. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Ah, General Kenobi. Hello there. Um, <laughs> yes. And welcome back to Sure It'll Be Grand. I guess I now for the third time. And it's um, we're doing every two week episodes now, as some of you may be aware. For all one people listening to this, um, hello. Oh, that person is very aware, though. Yes, they're very aware. Uh, fair play to them, and we love them dearly. Uh, Owen, how has your two weeks been? Incredible, outrageous, astounding. I'm yes. just having a great time. Well, you kind of are, actually, aren't you? Because um, a certain TV show has hit the <laughs> waves. I don't want to say the waves because it's not any more, like, you know, aerial. Yes, but it released. Yeah. It released. Well, it, the waves of the internet. It made Surfing. waves. Surfing. Made Whoa. waves. Yeah. Made waves. In, uh, has it made waves? Has it made waves? With me or generally? Generally. Generally, yes. They haven't released viewership figures yet yeah. for the first three episodes, as far as I know. But there was... Um, Should we mention what we were talking about first? We're because... t- well, we're talking about the Wheel of Time. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I promised you all this would happen. Um, yeah. And Dan, I will please please cut me off at some point during this because uh, no. I'm going to... The will, less I cut I you off, take. the less work I have to no, do. No, just, <laughs> just, just generally, like, if once we hit some sort of mark, just get me to stop and let's we'll right, talk about okay. the movie or I'll give you 15 minutes, I, how about that? I will talk about this just forever. I um, haven't even had a chance to really talk about it yet. We didn't even talk about it. Like We kind of messaged a little bit about it. But, but yeah, it came out last Friday, the first three episodes of The Wheel of Time, um, which I have mentioned a bunch on this show because it's my favorite thing ever. Like, I'm a, yes. hu- a huge fan of the books. I have yes. been since I was, f- I think I was 15, 14 or 15 when I read the first book. Um, and I've read them all a lot. Yes. Like yeah. a, a lot. So. And you've been badgering people a lot to read them. Yeah, I just <laughs> fucking read them. Hey, but hey the, man, man, I read like five books, okay? Yeah, no, you you did. You're the only one that yeah. ever listened to me and read some yeah. of them. Um, but yeah, so the, the first three episodes came out last Friday and the rest, the, the remaining episodes will be releasing every, one every Friday until, um, I think, I actually think the series finale is coming out on like Christmas Eve or something. Um, oh, Okay. So they have between now and December twelfth to build them se- build the buzz because The Witcher season two comes out on December twelfth and it's awkward. It's, oh, it's awkward, awkward timing yeah. for them. But yeah, it it released and people are furious. Yeah, they are. And also, they? some other people are not furious. I'm not furious. I think it's great. Um, but I do. Uh, yeah, like oh, so overall. Um, and I I tweeted about this as well. If people want to read my full generalized thoughts on the first three episodes overall it's very good um just in terms of i think the costuming is incredible i'm a bit i think the set design and stuff is great but there's it's it's a it's like there's a little bit genericness in there i think it's more that like television genericness it's like looking at some of the sets they're very obviously sets like yeah, they it, don't feel they, they, they don't not at all. they like they look everything looks too <laughs> new or something, especially yeah. in in Eamon's Field. Yeah, which yeah. For some reason, they don't say the name Eamon's Field or Eamon's Field. But the, my main takeaway from this is I have to learn how to pronounce things properly because I've never only ever read them. Like I've, nobody's ever yeah. pronounced these words for me. And yes, I know there is a glossary at the back of every single book with phonetic pron- pronunciations for yeah, things. Fuck but that. phonetic pronunciations confuse me yeah. more than actual words. Yeah. Right, I don't know what they mean. You know what half the time. got me? Like, and the tiny little, it's not really a spoiler, but they say, Oh, um, I know they live past the mountains in the books, but they don't live in the mountains in the book, do they? They live at the like the foot of the mountain, basically. Yeah, because but the TV show makes it feel like they're more like hidden up inside them. Yeah, they're like they're they're very close to the mountains. Yeah, that's that's the my god. Um, yeah, they're very close to the mountains yeah. of mist, and the the road that travels from town to town in the two rivers is called the Quarry Road. Um, 
So there would they would have been at some point a mining town. Manetherin, which I'm still gonna call Manetherin because the show I know that she says Manetherin, that sounds like an element of the periodic table or something to me. I'm just it's I don't know. Um sounds weird. So Manetherin <laughs> would have been in the mountains. It would have been higher up in the mountains of mist originally. Anyway, I'm getting way off topic. The yeah, the first three episodes I overall I think they're very good. I'm very excited to see where they take things from here, to be honest. Um they have obviously changed certain things and I just I'll just touch on some of them briefly and what I liked and didn't like. The parent thing I've I only have one problem with the changes. The the yeah. the biggest ones that they've are clearly very obvious changes, apart from like just general plot structures and stuff. The parent one is just is is odd. It's an odd choice to make for me. Um, because he's he's meant to be a little bit like oh he's not good around girls and he's flustered at the beginning like he's like this big guy who's a bit shy about things you know yeah like that's, well that's there's a there's weird. a there's a running joke throughout all of the books that neither of Rand Matt and Perrin they all they're all, they're always like damn oh I wish I wish Rand was here he knows how to talk to girls or then yeah. Perrin like damn I wish Matt was here he knows how to talk to girls and yeah. like they all think they're useless and they all get a lot of action so not really but yeah it's just a, it's just a Rand weird especially yeah yeah <laughs> I won't like I won't say what I won't I won't say like what what the change is maybe because I want people to watch it um and it won't matter if you haven't read the books but. Yeah, it's just a weird one, and there's other. There are there are two other characters in particular that have a large presence in Perrin's life in the books that they've decided to get rid of and replace with something else. Um, they could have just used those characters or one of them, and it would have still worked. It's just um, it's an odd choice. I know what they're trying to do with it. I get why they did it. Like I understand th- they're trying to they're trying to really showcase that other side of Perrin that he's afraid of he's afraid to because he does he's always even in the books like he says it multiple times that he's so much bigger than everybody else he's he's like afraid to do you know what I mean like if he if he ever like lashes out or does something he'll he could seriously hurt somebody and he's always been like that but it, yeah it's um to not sh- not sure of that one yet uh, I don't hate it I think it's fine it's just an odd choice to make um m- the Matt stuff I think is perfectly fine. I think it makes total yeah, sense. Matt I don't have any good, problem yeah. with it. Being honest, nobody ever really cared about Abel Cotton that much in the first place. Um, and it really, I, I think it helps I was waiting for a little bit of a performance from that dude. It, I think know. it'll come back. I think it's going to come back around much later. If the show ever gets to like its fifth or sixth season, yeah. I think it will, that will come back around. He does show again anyway. Like. He, do, he Realistically, he doesn't. Yeah. He isn't a character until book six or seven. Yeah, yeah. Able, like, and that's when you kind of first meet him. But um, well, like you know, he's mentioned in the, at this beginning, but he doesn't do anything in the first book. He's just yeah. Matt's dad that they mention. But yeah, I'd, yeah, I'm fine with that. I think it's an int- I think it's a good choice. Um, the other Matt thing is that they he steals things. Um, a lot of people have a problem with that because oh, Matt's not a thief and blah, blah blah. Again, it doesn't bother me. It's not. It's you know, it's I not like he's a. I think not to spoil it for people, so I won't go too much. But with the knife and all that, I think it actually makes more sense how it then was in the books for him to be a bit of a thief, just a little bit. Yeah, no. See that there's the other thing is in the book in in Shadow. Let's don't go too far on that, by the but way. But just you know, in that scene, there is yeah, there is another. There's a a character that they sort of left yeah. out as well during that because they didn't really. They hinted at at it being there, but the, um. Yeah, I don't know. I think the structurally they made some changes that sort of make sense. I think the first episode is very clearly the first episode was originally about like two hours long and it was cut yeah. to shit. They cut yeah, so a well, yeah. whole bunch of stuff out of it and it's really obvious. There's, there's I just love like, when they show people like walk around the uh, market like on the festival day and says, oh, well, that was the festival day drink of yeah, they're so they're, like i get it and i know the, the like the writers and the showrunner are kind of on record saying that they thought that they had to to get things started they had to get out of, of the two rivers as quickly as possible like they they needed to leave and like set out into the world and that's fine but like the the pilot could have been two hours long nobody would have cared yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's studio interference uh rafe judkins the showrunner it has said in interviews that the first episode or whatever when he was making it he got like 
this is him saying this, he got about 11,000 notes from the studio. Um, so I definitely think the studio yeah. were like, nah, this is too long. Nobody's going to watch this for two hours. You're, you're like, this is just people sitting around talking for the first hour. And fans would have loved it, but I can see where they're coming from. This is other, weird, like, this otherwise, but this is the same plat. But this is the same platform that's releasing the Lord of the Rings TV series, right? Which is, you know, I mean, not, I don't think canonically connected to the movies, but like, pe- they know that fantasy viewers will watch things. You know, yeah, well, they'll yeah. watch it for two hours, no bother. They will. They will. <laughs> two hours is nothing. No, and it's a pilot. P- show, yeah. Plenty of shows have done like really long pilots, and then every other episode is is regular length. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think the I think the first episode suffers from that. I think there's a lot of stuff in it. Like first time, my first I've watched I watched three episodes a couple of times now. Um, like first because first time through I was just very emotional and and like every time they mentioned something wheel of timey i was like oh my god i can't believe this is real i can't believe they've actually thrown like a, a big budget at a wheel of time thing and it's not just some like because in my head it's still just this like i know it's massive it's sold bajillions of copies worldwide since it's been released like but in my head it's still mm. this like small thing that only i know about or something it's like it's so yeah. weird to see it on the screen to be fair whenever i do mention it to people that he's still go like what? Uh, what is that? Yeah, I've never it is. I've like, I've never it's still a, not a huge fancy thing. I've never met anybody that has read it. Yeah, like in real life, I've never people have like, oh, what are you reading, or what's your favorite book, or whatever. I'm like, oh, it's the wheel of time, and they're like, oh yeah, I know about it. No, most people don't. But at the same time, it is the second highest selling fantasy novel series of all time behind the Lord of the Rings. So. Yeah. That could be also it's, because it has a lot of books. Yeah, it does so. have a lot of books, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah. So, yeah, for, I don't know. I get, I like this, most of the changes are fine. I think uh, I think the cast are amazing. I think they're all really, yeah. really well cast. Like, uh, Rosamund Pike as Moraine is perfect. Um, Daniel Henney as Lan, I wasn't sold on initially. But after seeing he's I great. think he's great. I love what he's doing with Lan. I, th- um, I think a yeah. lot of what he's doing is that... Is like, because he doesn't, because Lan doesn't say much in general, but it's it's his yeah. actions, it's the the staging of things with Lan is great. Um, never really thought I'd say this, but I quite like Egwene. I always hated her yeah. in the books. I I never liked her as a character if from book one. She was just a brat. I just was like, no, nah, I don't. Let, you're just annoying me. Um, and I just I think she gets. I think she does some really cool shit. Don't get me wrong. Like throughout the book, she does. She's important, and she does some very. Yeah. She has some awesome moments, but I just. Never I really love the relationship between Lan and Moraine. They really did well to show that there's like a symbiosis going on there as well. Yeah, yeah, they did that. Even I know the bath scene was a, maybe some people's sacred too. It just I actually thought it it genuinely explained how they're almost one entity. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it was great. I love their. I love all of that. I think um, Marcus Rutherford as Perrin is perfect casting. It's yeah, he's he's, great. he's brilliant. Is it? I'm, I'm. He's that nice big lump yeah, of a man. I'm really, kind of really excited yeah. for his plotline that's coming up. Yeah, um, yeah. It's gonna be. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, I think the. Um. Uh, yeah, I think Nynaeve is. I think Nynaeve is very good as well. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not crazy about the added backstory thing that they gave her. Um, I, I think it's part of it is fine, but the the fact where you know I just it I think it diminishes her somewhat. Um, what they've said about her, where she grew up or whatever. Um, yeah, but she's Zoe Robbins it, is great. Here's the thing: it's been a while since I read. Um, at the very beginning, the river scene did that happen in the books? No. Okay, no, the grand. women, okay. the women circle this initiation thing. No, they yeah. they've aged all the characters up for the show slightly as well. They in, did, yeah. in which is all right. I don't. No, it's it's that. they're not like Literally, they're like a year no. or two older basically. Yeah. Um, but Egg Egwin in at, at the start of the first book ha- hasn't. It's a thing that where she has because they're like the women's coming of age thing is once they like come of age they're allowed to they have they start wearing their hair in a braid like yeah. Nynaeve does and Egwin and the start of the first book um i believe she starts wearing her hair in, in a braid and the lads comment on it like you're not old enough yet kind of thing like you're not yeah. she's like just not quite that age yet um 
So we don't know if they, maybe they do have some sort of ceremony. I'm assuming they do when a woman comes of age, but we don't see anything like that. Uh, we don't like naive just throw her off a cliff into a raging river or anything like that. But it's great. It, it what that scene does is it's brilliant foreshadowing for things later. Um, yeah, yeah that's in, true. on on how one might do do a certain thing. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, they're all all the cast are great. I uh, Barney Harris as Matt is probably the one where I'm like, and this is, it's not him. I think he's very good. I'm just kind of like, I don't want to fall in love with him because he's not coming back for season two. Is he not? They recast Matt for season two. Um, oh. It's a different guy. I actually think he's an Irish actor named uh, Donal. Hey, Donal. it's grand. Lovely. D- <laughs> Donal, and I can't think of his last name. Um, Donal Gleeson. <laughs> Do- Dominal Gleeson is bad. But yeah, it's... It, He's good. He's very good, and I like what they're doing with Matt. Mm. It's just it's hard to. I don't want to like him too much because mm. I know he's not come back. They have not said a single thing about why. There's okay. no, we have no zero information. We don't know if he dis, if he left. We don't know if he was if he did something and he was fired. We don't know if they were just like this is not working out. We don't know if it was a contract thing. We don't know if something happened to him. Like nothing. I can't he, wait. He wasn't even at the, the, the premiere. The first three episodes are going to just keep on calling Matt really loudly in the second season yeah. just to reconnect people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't even in the, he wasn't even at the, the world premiere was in London and all the cast were there. Oh, and Barry did. Harris wasn't at. Like, like he hasn't been in any of the, the promo stuff. They're all doing all these, all the cast are doing interviews and stuff now. He's not doing any of that stuff. So nobody knows what happens, but the people are leaning on the people seem to be in two camps they either think people are either worried about him and they're like god i hope he's okay that they think it was he left because he wasn't like like he was having problems or something and yeah and th- the other side of people are like he obviously did something like something mm. clearly happened but re- the, the answer is no we don't know we have no idea here's the thing um it's not so much casting but just characterization tom yeah tom is the one where i I'm reserving judgment because I don't know yet. I don't hate what we saw of him in episode three. Um, but it's not Tom. But I was just kind of like, this isn't, this is, I'm not, you know. Now, look, yeah. I think, I think I, I could, I'd come to like him uh, for what it is. Um, yeah. Just it's not, he's not, it's not Tom as I saw him. But yeah, he did make cartwheels sure. and jumped around and like had, Patterns on the outside of his coat, and it was very he the, the coat is the thing that gets me because Tom was like he was super particular and protective of his yeah. demon's coat, like it was a big deal that like this is yeah. like no, if you don't have a coat, you're just a regular street performer. The gle- the coat is what makes you a gleeman. You get the coat, and everybody knows when you walk into town that's a gleeman. That's not just some guy who can juggle. That's a gleeman. Yeah. Um. So like like they and he has the patches. I don't know. Part of me thinks we're gonna they're doing some weird thing where he he's hiding it. Like the jacket is a spec. They've made the jacket particular to Tom and not just all gleam. And it's like a special thing. Yeah. And he's wearing it inside out so people don't realize he's Tom Marilyn, who, not to give anything away, but is more than just a simple gleeman. Um <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I'll see. I'll see where they go with it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But that episode overall was great. I liked how they combined all of. Rand and Matt's wandering around the countryside for 17 chapters into just one condensed incident in a town. That was cool as well as well written. Um, yeah, there you go. It, I've it, I've gone over 15 minutes, but there's my general. There's my thoughts. You have two minutes left, buddy. Do I? <laughs> oh shit. Okay, I've got a minute left. What else? What else do I want to talk about? Uh, the effects are hit and miss. Uh, some of them. Yes. Are... Oh, can I just talk? There's one effect. It's when the village is being attacked. And the Trolloc is above um, one of the characters and is about to, like, attack and just, you know, gets ripped apart. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say what happens. Yeah, yeah, because it, yeah. But it looks like PlayStation 2 graphics. Like the, yeah, some... The it, they're, they're, come, they're, you, know what, you know what did it for me? <laughs> what what made on. me go, ugh was um actually the the bathtub scene i thought the when my rain heats the water and the yeah. steam starts coming off of it it was really obviously like just fake steam that had been laid over the top of the image it was just like what is this it doesn't it look like really it's weird, coming from the water definitely like just like it's, there was a simple thing yeah steam and you know this it. they had a i read somewhere i read somewhere at some point because they were kind of 
bragging a little bit about the budget that they had for each episode. Somebody yeah. somewhere said Amazon gave them like ten million an episode or something crazy Doesn't to make look this like thing. That. But because the, they were bragging about how they all of the village of Amon's Field in in episode one, they built the whole village just so they could burn it down again. Like they built the entire thing and then they physically knocked everything down when during the final oh. battle and stuff. And that okay. felt just like well, that just seems like a waste. But <laughs> but yeah, the effects are kind of they look. I think part of it looked good. I liked the the channeling in it. Like the Maureen when she's weaving the one power looks good for the most yeah. part. No, I think they um, have to work on her choreography. I think they could have done. I think they could have been cleverer about it. Um, yeah, because there is a. I think depending on who who is lo- which character in world is watching Moraine do what she's doing, you could you could either see or not see the weaves. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But you know, it is a vi- it's a visual cue for the audience, so it's fine if it's there the whole time. But they could have been they could have done something cool like that and then explained it afterwards. But um, yeah, overall, I I, I really liked it. Uh, yeah, I loved it. To be quite honest, I think it was I think it's good. I think it's off. I think it's a good start, um, and I think, I think by episode three, that it had kind of really found its rhythm, and episode three felt like a proper episode of TV, I guess, because there was a lot kind of condensed into particularly episode one. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Tam is great. There's my final point. Cool. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. There you go. Good. Right, uh, we're also doing a show today, and it's a Star Trek movie. Uh, one of the old-ish ones. I don't want to say older ones because um, I can already feel people getting um, scared and annoyed. Um, yes, uh, we're doing Star Trek First Contact. And with this, I got on to do some homework um, by watching a few select TNG episodes. Yes, didn't I? Uh, you gave me a list of six, well, five yes. and one. Five. You said Optional. there was a sixth one that you know you can watch this maybe if you want. I d- I watched three of them. <laughs> yes, you did. Got but through three. I think them. you watched the three important ones, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you watched that, and I think yeah, we'll go through it. Um, so this was TNG's uh second movie, uh the first one being Generations, um. It it was directed by um, Jonathan Fricks, our very own Mr. Riker, who... Oh, and you had some notes on Riker. Uh, can you read them there? <clears throat> Let me pull up my notes and find uh, what I wrote about Riker. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, I have it here. Um, Riker Fox. <laughs> that guy knows how to fuck. Yes, he does. I mean, that yes, man... Does is a specimen. Yes. And he is. looks at every single thing in the room. I'm not just people of, no, no. of not just people, not just humans, not just uh, items, I think. Yeah. Every single thing that he looks at, he looks at like he's thinking about how he would fuck it. You know there's a thing in it. Um you might not have actually seen it in your um uh, bit of viewing a Star Trek, but this thing called the Riker maneuver, right? <laughs> uh so yeah, you think it's that? It's not that. Uh, <laughs> it is. That. Um, yeah, maybe it is. Okay, uh, but when he once you notice it, and uh, if you ever watch Star Trek again, he swings his legs, his leg over the back of a chair when sitting down. He doesn't stand in front of the chair and sit back. He swings it over every chair he sits because John Friggs has a back injury, and that was the easiest way for him to sit down. But no one notices this until they're told. And then they see it every single time. But yeah, um, I just loved it. But yes, he was uh, directing this movie. Um, we have uh, the TNG cast back um, with a few additions from other uh, Star Trek um, shows as well. Um, we have Patrick Stewart, obviously, uh, coming back as Picard. Uh, John Frakes comes back as Riker, though not much Riker. He's there, here and there. But I, because... Uh, John Frakes is directing it. I think he decided to take a bit of a backseat on his character. Uh, Give me your notes on Data there. Data is goated. Yeah. Data is the MVP of everything. Yeah, yeah. I love that man. Android. Mandroid. Yes. 
data. Uh, LeVar Burton returns as Jordy. Um, you had a reaction to Jordy in this movie, didn't you? Well, I had written down when I was watching the TV episodes. My one of my questions was, "What the fuck's up with the thing on his head?" Like, oh, I, do you want, why does he have you, a? He has a visor. I was like, "Does he have eyes? Is this a special device that like magnifies his vision, or is this his eyes?" Yeah. Do you want to answer? It? Have an answer. Well, in the in the in the movie, he has eyes. So it, yeah. I was kind of like, okay, well, there you go. It's fine. No, okay, no, no. So he doesn't have those eyes in the TV show. So he has no he has no eyes. No, he has eyes, but he's just blind. They're just right. milky white. We see him take it off once in a while. He, I, I, I think it was a, f- he had since he was born. Like he was blind since he was born. Like, um, I was about to say it's because he got caught in a fire, but then I realized that was later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. So he can. He can see using that device, and then uh, for the movies, they gave him implants, those irises, things he had. Um, then uh, Michael Dorn as Worf. Uh, we a new um, I because you're you're a new viewer. I want to know your notes uh, about Worf. <laughs> Worf is useless. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't do anything. He no, just he's fucking. Not. He's just there, and they're like Commander Worf, and he just like pulls out a fucking. Uh, uh, what do you call the things they shoot with? Phaser. Phaser. I was going to call it a taser. But uh, uh, <laughs> he pulls out a phaser and is like, it's not working. And then he gets smashed against the wall and they all go, whoa, wharf. And then that's it. That's all he does in every episode. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. He had a great um, line in this movie and you know it. He, yeah, he, d- he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll fair. mention it a little yeah. bit later. Uh, yeah, uh, Gates McFadden's come back to Beverly. Um, I found out weird. So Gates McFadden, Beverly um, in TNG, is kind of seen as a love interest for uh, Picard. And, you know, I, oh, look, we'll mention that later on. Remind me about uh, Beverly, okay? Uh, then sure. Ma- Ma- Marina Sirtis uh, as Troy. And then um, Alfred Woodard, Woodard as Lily, who was a new character for this movie. Um, she was one of, like, 21st century person and uh, Zephyrin Cochran um, it's James Cromwell and I suppose I'll mention one more person which is the Boar Queen Alice Krieg yes, yes. who we both somehow recognised yeah yeah. Weirdly. She, she suddenly became very recognisable to us she, Though, like she's, in, she's in the most intense physical costume yeah. I've ever seen yeah. and we were both like is that is she in Thor yeah <laughs> But and really weird because the Thor one is like a two minute job. Like. She doesn't want to see. I think we both because I was like, was she in Thor? And you were like, oh, we, is, is that Thor's mother? And that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, is she? Yeah. Is that Thor's mother? Yeah, is, yeah. She's not Thor's mother, but she is in Thor: The Dark World. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this game was a little bit of hey, wait for you because uh, Neil McDonough, 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 uh, yeah. Buzz Lightyear, yeah, yeah, playing Lieutenant Hawk. And there was um, Adam Scott uh, from The Office. Yeah, I mean, he's it's like one little little yeah. scene, but still, I was like, oh hey, it's Adam Scott. Yeah, he was he was on the Defiant as con officer. Um, there were there were some cameos from other um, Star Trek shows as well. Robert Picardo shows up as a holographic doctor. Um, remember that when they're trying to escape the men? Sure. Yeah, uh, he was in Voyager. He was a long term character as a holographic doctor. Oh. And we also had, oh, people going to kill me. Um, the actor for Neelix. Give me one second. Neelix. Johnny Silvernose. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Ethan Phillips uh, showed up um, when they first entered um, the holograph, hologram, holosuite. Um, where he's like, "Hey, fellas, to the Borgs, you can't come in here not dressed." He he has played um, a few characters, but notably uh, Neelix in Voyager. So th- there was a bit of love there. They wanted you know show people from different ones. The one thing, like the Defiant shows up, which is from DS Nine. Um, that's why Worf, because Worf and um obviously TNG was over at that stage, and he joined the cast of DS Nine as Worf. 
Um, <laughs> and yeah, they came in for the rescue. But yes, I think we could start talking about this movie. <laughs> Right. What the hell is going on? Um, movie starts. Picard is having some nightmares about being Locutus, as when he was a Borg himself. When he got, now, and you watched those two episodes where he gets turned into Locutus. Did you like the two episodes? Um. Yeah, they were alright. Yeah, they were okay. It's... Like. It's interesting because they were a season finale and a season um, start episode. So, you know when Riker, yeah. at the end of the first episode, says, let's sh- well, like shoot or like attack. Like, that was the end of a season. And then people had to wait to see what would happen. Yeah, like, Riker I, I thought and all this kind of thing. Um, they were, those two episodes were better than the, than the other one I watched. Yeah. The, the Q one. I don't like that guy, yeah. and I thought that episode was kind of stupid. But, um, oh, was a way but I get it. It, it introduces yeah. the Borg for the first time, so yeah. I get it. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you watched Family as well, didn't you? No, I watched. Oh, I watched Q Q Who Who Q I Q. Oh, who? but yeah, no, you won't watch Family before that. But I think Q Who was the first on the list, and then was the, it? All right, and sure then it was the two parter, okay. and then oh, you should watch. Then the it was I one. I Borg, and then something else. Yeah, um, yeah. Family was is a good episode because it shows how torn up Picard is. He goes home to visit his brother and all that kind of stuff. Damn it! Yeah. Okay. But so you've watched the TV series. You watch some of the TV series now. What do you think of the Borg? Um. So, at first, I thought they were dumb. Right. I thought my initial thoughts were. Wait now, I'll, ro- I'll read it to you exactly as I wrote it down when I was watching it. The Borg looked like poo. Okay. That's what I wrote down. Uh, ba- me- ma- mainly their ship. I was like, this is this looks stupid. This is a big cube. Um, oh yeah, I think they get better. I think um, they're basically the Cybermen, right? Oh, see, there's a fucking debate. <laughs> is that, is that yeah, just well, what yeah, they yeah, are? They, they're just the Cybermen? Believe it or not, um, the, it was a crossover comic where the Cybermen yeah, and the Borg sure, yeah. come of course together. there was, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, wow, you're me. Oh, what? Is that Spider-Man <laughs> meme that's pointing at each other? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There's some Facebook groups I'm part of that would love that image <laughs> drawn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, they're fine. Like, it's the, I, they're not... Um, they're a good concept, though, aren't they? Yeah, that that concept is good. Yeah. In general, like it's a it's an interesting thing to um, explore. Um, yeah. And I think, th- I think the movie does a, a good job of exploring like that kind of aspect of Star Trek of what is humanity and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they're fine. They're all right. I think they I yeah. definitely think they're a lot more interesting in the in the movie with the Borg Queen involved um, than in the three episodes I saw them in because they were just like nameless faceless and then captain picard was one and i was like yeah he's dead Um, forever yeah yeah, i think a lot of people had problems actually given the borg a face because they were meant to be less seen as individuals and as a character and more as this almost like force of nature like a, a cloud front coming and ready to destroy things but i understand why other people do actually like having the queen there because it actually makes gives intent and feeling to them you know yeah it's it, i think they were just going for the because they the the hive mind kind of thing would have a, a queen of some sort but i know yeah. i liked i liked the queen in yeah. the movie yeah, i she, thought she was good yeah yeah uh the dominatrix yeah <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> very clearly a dominatrix yes <laughs> meanwhile in the sex dungeon <laughs> aboard the ss enterprise <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, the uh, Picard is having dreams about the Borg and that kind of stuff, and he gets a call from an admiral, and the admiral saying, "Hey, sorry to wake you up or whatever, Picard. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Borg coming. Uh, we don't want you anywhere there. We want you to go to the Romulan neutral zone and make sure the Romulans don't fuck about while we're like having to fight the Borg." And he tells his team, and they're like, "What the fuck? Like, you're literally the expert on the Borg. This is so dumb." 
says, yeah, well, I mean, maybe they think I'm a liability and blah, 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 blah. And ends up, you know, uh, Starfleet can't handle the Borg because they didn't send their expert. And Picard says, oh, I'm going to go and fight the Borg cube. Fuck Starfleet's rule. And Data goes, hell yeah, man. And <laughs> they <laughs> fly off to Earth. That's how, talk. That's how he talks. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, man. Hell Woo. yeah, dude. Let's I'm go kill robot. some shit. Woo. That's why I like Data. That's how he... He's that character. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, Picard breaks the rules, flies back to Earth, and makes a last stand with some of the remaining ships to defend Earth. And Worf comes in on the Defiant, uh, shooting down, and he's like, oh, maybe today is a good time to die and not do anything, really. Brah! And the Enterprise comes to shield him, and Worf joins back on um, the ship. And yeah, they, ha- they have a battle, and um, Picard suddenly realizes there's a way to destroy the ship. Tells them, like, oh, yeah, just shoot at these things. And they're like, uh, homie, uh, this is not going to destroy the, like, not important systems on the Borg cube. He says, hey, dude, who's the captain? Do it. Mm. And... He doesn't, he, he doesn't, as to my recollection, tell them what they were shooting at, though. Yeah, like he, he gives just, coordinates. He, yeah, but he gives yeah. the coordinates, and they're like, "That's that data is like that's that, those are no, they're not like um, systems, <laughs> important systems, or li- yeah. life support systems, or whatever the fuck he's like systems that the ship needs to function." And Picard's yeah. like, "I know, trust me, shoot exactly at those coordinates," and they all shoot, and then the ship blows up, <laughs> which kind of says they whatever was there was an important function of the war. Yeah, yeah, like, it, oh, like, yeah. It was clearly Maybe something like, yeah. I always assume that maybe it's like maybe it's a relay or something that everything kind of goes through that's not important by itself or if it doesn't work all the other things can't work kind of thing I don't know yeah. um, he could have told like Safi a while ago that hey there's a soft spot on the poor cube yeah it's, in, it's interesting that nobody from Starfleet like even your <laughs> one in the two episodes the two parts that I watched the yeah. the blonde woman that had a thing with Riker when, um, yeah. who was apparently the star. Not a sex thing with Riker, no, well, just to be I clear. Just because it is Riker. I think maybe it uh, developed that way. The, oh, I, there was sexual tension. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> That's just, Riker has that with everybody. The I think he, who she was, they said in those episodes, Starfleet's designated Borg woman, basically. Like yeah. she, was, she was in charge of investigating yeah. the Borg. She never sat down with Captain Picard and was like, let's pick your brain. Tell me everything you know about the Borg. Tell me how their ships work. Tell me, like, tell me how they function. Tell me what their purpose is. Tell me if they have a leader. Like, she was never like, we need to do a follow-up interview with you, Mr. Picard, yeah. because you got turned into an alien robot for yeah. a few hours, and we need to see if you're yeah. okay. Like, that never happened. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think um, they do hint that, oh, he can still hear their song, so maybe he doesn't really know it normally but because he's nearby he can hear the hive mind in himself and knows where to go it might be one of those situations you know they could make that possibly. clear possibly um. yeah there it's also there's also a scene where when he meets the Borg queen for the first time where he's it's like a suddenly he goes oh i remember you now kind of thing as if he had he'd forgotten yeah, all of that exactly yeah you were destroyed in that ship. Oh, you think so? Three dimensional, Picard. Yeah, basically that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She also says. Anyway, to me, yeah. Um. Uh. The Borg cube. Uh. Has a baby, and it's a round one, and it flies towards the Earth and travels back in time. Uh. To. Twenty first century nineteen. Uh. Twenty. Twenty sixty three. Sixty three. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um. And basically what they're trying to do is trying to stop Stefan Cochran, who was the man who invented the warp engine, which is how all the enter- all the entership prizes, ooh, fuck, all the starships um, in Star Trek fly around. Um, that's, that's, they use warp engines, and they're basically trying to kill that dude. And it's post-World War Three, so everyone's kind of not ready to resist the Borg and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, uh, like... They realize that the Borg have changed in history, and they follow them. And a wonderful jaunt occurs of them meeting Zephyr Cochran, him not being as much of a hero as they thought he'd be. And all the female characters the... leave the movie. Yeah. At this point. Yeah, which, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's the big thing. And, you know, the, the movie is all about really, um, Picard 
um, fighting his urge for revenge and wants to destroy the Borg with his idea of what it means to be human, how humans are meant to be more evolved at this stage. And, you know, that it's not about revenge. It's about doing the best for humanity and those around you. You know, that's that's the ethos. So it's it's Picard's conflict with that ethos. Um, yes. Because he is so personally hurt like they like if you watch the family one like um he talks as well as like like they opened him up they tore things out of him like he lost parts of himself when he was turned into a borg like it's it really really hit him hard mm -hmm. and yeah it, it's a story of that it's, it's a story of picard more than anything maybe that's the idea it's you know how earth was turned into like a Borg planet is kind of what happened with Patrick Stewart and uh, Patrick Stewart's character Picard because he was his entire being was changed into this Borg and now he has to find a way to go back to the core of who he is and try to recreate that you know Captain Ahab Captain Ahab yeah this is, this is the thing I want to mention right um so I liked Lily. She's grand. Um, I, I love the actress. Excellent actress in general. But um, yeah, Lily um, Lily is from Earth, uh, 21st century. Um, she worked along with Stephen Cochran on the warp engine. And she um, gets some radiation poisoning from um, the Phoenix, which is the ship they're using um, for the warp, which used to be a, a, like a nuclear silo. And, like, after a confrontation of Data jumping down three fucking stories oh, yeah. in the missile yeah, yeah, silo. Great, great scene. Great scene. <laughs> Just, <"Whoa!" laughs> uh, she has, like, radiation poisoning and, you know, she gets brought to the ship and Beverly looks after her and all this kind of stuff. But, yeah, eventually she kind of comes the moral compass for um, Picard, saying, like, what the fuck are you doing? This is all about revenge. But it's really interesting because Picard has this. Um, so the Enterprise is taken over by Borg. Um, a lot of his crew gets taken over. Um, and him and Lily are running through the ship and all this kind of stuff and tricks them into a hollow suite and shoots them. And we see this really kind of Picard moment where um, Picard really sticks his hands into inside, inside of this dead Borg trying to rip out a chip and this like, blood over his hands and all that. And Lily knows, wait, Jesus, this is like one of your crew. And says, oh, yeah. And he knows the crew member. And like he's lost complete like perspective. Like, and it gets to the point where he's on the ship and he calls Worf a coward that he just wants to run away. And one thing you can say about Worf, he's not a coward. Not at all. He loves to fight. He wants to do this shit. But he's like, no, we got to protect the crew. You fucking idiot! We got to leave, <laughs> and Picard's like, "No, I will sacrifice every single person on this ship," and and you know all this kind of. And we see, like Lily goes to Beverly and says, "So what do we do now after Picard leaves?" And says, "We do as the captain told." Said he never changes his mind. It's like Beverly, you're literally the character a lot of the time who go to the captain to talk to him about things like and i really feel lily's almost the beverly character in this like you know like they, they swapped her out yeah weirdly it's yeah. i don't I, it's kind of odd like diana like essentially just she gets like blackout drunk at the start of the movie, and then we don't really see her ever again. <laughs> she's no. not around anymore. Like, even no. when they're doing things on Earth, she's not there. Beverly, like, escapes from the med bay and then also kind of isn't really around anymore. And it's just yeah. Lily kind of following Picard around, acting as his literal conscience in scenes, just going like, w you can't do that. No, that's one of your yeah. people. No, you've gone mad with power kind of thing, almost to the extent where I wouldn't have been surprised if at the end they turned around and... Captain Picard was like, yeah, Lily was a great woman and great. everyone else was like, who the fuck was Lily? What are you talking about? It's all in your <laughs> head. <laughs> there was no Lily. What do you want about John Luke? And he's like, oh shit, I invented a, a woman to act as my conscience or something. Like <laughs> oh God. Because that was her whole, that was the only reason she was there, was to just Yeah, I mean, it was that, that and to scene. show how a person of her 
time would react to like the enterprise and its people and that kind of stuff. But to be fair, that could have just been set from Cochrane. Yeah, we had that at, with, with Cochrane. Like that was yeah, you know, had a lot of that with Cochrane. Like his whole thing yeah. was him going, "What the fuck is happening? No, I don't want this. I didn't do this for to save humanity. I just want to be rich." You know, it's weird. Yeah, he probably he probably was rich. You know, it's weird. In the original series, uh, you get to meet Stephen Cochran as well, um, because like it's it, like he's meant to be dead for a long, long time, but <laughs> they just meet him on a random planet, and he hasn't aged because they say look, there was just a legend of him one day leaving um, Earth on a ship and never coming back, and they find him in the original series, and he's a mortal kind of thing going on. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna make you watch that one, but I went. Uh, and is I, he? I, I is, can't make him watch TOS. <laughs> is he still like? Like, is it the same? Is he the same then as he is in this, or is it like? Because no, he's, like an he's a little being, bit more. Is he? Ver- but, but he is he the figure that they believe he is from history books? Yeah, like, he's a bit. Like, he's a bit more of that. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. <laughs> he's not like. Oh, he's not drinking. like. He's not introducing <laughs> Spock's people to fucking. Rock music and alcohol. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I, did you like Stephen Cochran in this? Yeah, he was great. Yeah, I like I like him. I like him as an actor, yeah. even if his last name is Cromwell. I think he's a good oh, actor. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't like we don't yeah. like Cromwells, but uh, yeah, he's good. I mean, we, he's in a bunch of shit that um, people will recognize him from. So um, it was nice to see him turn up. He was yeah. one of the moments where I went, oh yeah. Yeah. That guy's in this, yeah. so he's good. Well, I, he's good. I, what I liked about him is because he, he's very much like, you know, because the people of like the 24th century, they're a little bit squeaky clean. They're a bit like proper and professional. And then there's this guy in a fucking dirty jacket who they adore, just drinking from a hip that's going, woo, I'm going to take a leak. Is that a, a leak? I don't see any leaks around here. Do you people, I'm surprised that, don't you people pee? I was like, that's a bit weird for him to say. I was like, "Hey, don't you go for a fucking piss sometimes?" Yeah, I I thought it was odd <laughs> that he said "pee" as well in that yeah. sentence. I, they obviously yeah. was the rating for this, like where they was yeah. it a, they weren't allowed curse, yeah, kind of thing. So they had to have him say "pee." Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one f bomb would have made it PG thirteen. Yeah, I think is the rule. Yeah. You're allowed one f. I think it's one. Yeah. Correct me if I'm well, wrong. Yeah. Um. I mean, look, there's more. To, there's plenty more to talk about this movie. Um, you know, we get reemergence of Data. We know that he still has his emotion chip, um, which would have been news to you, I believe. The emotion chip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't mentioned in any of the episodes I watched. No, yeah, so I'm no, he, he didn't, didn't have, have an emotion chip back then. Yeah, and you know, he's he's emotional. Um, and he can turn it off and all kinds of stuff. But then, obviously, when he gets captured by the Boar Queen, she uses his emotions and his lack of um, use of those emotions to like basically hack into him, like like try to control him and use him. And she gives him like skin attached to his body. Yeah, I really orgasm. liked that. I really <laughs> liked that whole the whole yeah. back and forth between Data and the Boar Queen. I thought it was great. I loved the idea that Data like twisting data into the the borg collective functionally yeah. was the opposite of making a human into a borg they yeah, added yeah. human pieces to him to make him more malleable to to the borg so i thought that was cool that was yeah. really great um i still love that line moment. though like even though he said i was tempted for a while and because like what oh that's great yeah, yeah. Point zero two seconds that yeah that's an eternity for, an, an, android, eternity for an android yeah that's great yeah, yeah. data yeah. is just great i like data yeah, yeah, no, I I love data. And I definitely like if you ever, I can give you more episodes that have more data centered like, if you want to. Data is definitely the the ship of talk 100%. about data centers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ruining the, we'll have no electricity for Christmas then if we have any more data <laughs> centers. The, the show is very much like the the meme of um like data is very much the team at 100% and team at 99% where they cut out everyone else and it's just days. Oh, definitely. <laughs> he does He does everything every other crew member does, but better. Yeah. Oh, like, he's, like a, that, he's <laughs> stronger than Worf, right? Yeah. He's a better engineer than 
and then Jordy, who I, w- I yeah. want to call LaForge because I think it's a really cool last name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Where's Jordy? Not no, so much like, of a good name. <laughs> he, I, I, there's, I haven't seen explicit evidence of it, but I'm fairly certain he w- he knows more about human anatomy and medicine than Beverly. Yeah. I think he could so, do it. I think he probably, he probably has... Could, he could like, just be like, yeah, I'll, or, you know, whatever, I'll just learn I it suppose right the, now. the thing like, is, like, he... He doesn't have the imagination as well as humans. No, he doesn't. That, but like, yeah, you yeah. know, he's a better navigator than. Who's the navigator in this? Lieutenant Hawk. <laughs> yeah, it's Hawk. Is, yeah, is Hawk has Hawk navigator. replaced yeah, Wes- yeah. Wesley Crusher? Yeah, I think. No, no, no. It was no, the little kid, the navigator. Hawk. Lieutenant Hawk is another character. You said just Lute- Lieutenant Hawk, the character played Wesley Crusher. No, just has he replaced <laughs> Wesley Crusher? Oh right, in, okay. In, in like, in, like, no, man, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, are Neil McDonough and Will Wheaton the same person? <laughs> Did Will Wheaton no, grow no, up? No, no, fictional be... character is acting as a fictional character. Yeah, Wesley Crusher <laughs> grew up to be Lieutenant Hawk. That's why I saw it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he hated the his, his mother. He hated them saying "shut up, Wesley" so much that he had to change his name. I took uh, a bunch of like little notes. Do you want me to? Uh, do yes, like, questions please and stuff tell me the notes. Me to tell you where? Notes. Now I wrote these down just at, as I was watching the episodes and stuff. Um, first question: I started taking these after the first yeah. episode, right? So there's a woman in the in the first episode that I watched. Q who this like um, attractive. Deanna sort of looking figure who's following Geordie around the ship. No, right. Who is she and where did she go? Yeah, uh, she probably just Oh, is that the one who spilled hot chocolate on to Picard? I don't I, she was just she was like I don't know who she was. She was just in that episode. Did she spill hot chocolate on Picard? In that episode? Yeah. I don't no, I don't think so. I think she it was might just be like her following because... Geordie around. Like he was like yeah. teaching her things and stuff like she Yeah, was... yeah, that's that might be her um She's the one. Remember, we watched. Um, oh, what's that movie with Arnie? Arnold Schwarzenegger on Mars again. Total Recall. Total Recall. Remember Three Boob Lady? She plays Three Boob Lady. Three oh, Boob Lady. Three Boob Lady. <laughs> okay, so okay, she's yeah. Three Boob Lady. Um, this is just a general comment. Uh, in one of those episodes, there's a scene where they all play poker, and Data has a little hat on, and I thought it was yeah. nice. He wears a little, yeah, po- a little nice. poker visor, and it was cute. I go. just like that Data, who's a high-function um, computer, plays a card game with people. <laughs> yeah. like he, he must hold <laughs> he back. He was the dealer. Yeah. Though Riker wins every game, apparently. Data was the dealer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's why he has the hat on. Yeah, yeah. But um, doesn't the dealer play as well? No. Well, it depends no, on what you're okay. playing. If you're playing blackjack, you play against the dealer. Yeah. But they were playing um, some sort of Texas well, Hold'em it, style thing. I don't know what it was. Is but. it a surprise to you that Riker wins every game? No. Not at all, is it? No. It's because he'll just do that smile and goes, hmm. He has, he has no tells. You have no <laughs> yeah. idea at any moment. He has, what? There's no life behind those Every, ears. Everything, ears in his, eyes. Yeah, everything in his face when you look at him and try to read what he's thinking is just, this man wants to have sex, sex with me? <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> yeah. um, I like the way uh, Jean-Luc Picard says... Uh, tissues because he says tissues <laughs> he said it in one of the episodes and I thought oh that's nice did Patrick you come Stewart. across the French thing for Picard yeah hmm? so Picard is French yeah like like fully French he was born in France grew up in France yeah okay so you know okay just I'm aware of that but I, d- yeah, I don't know yeah, if it yeah. came up in any of these episodes but I know yeah, that's yeah, a, no, just, a thing just because yeah. I find it interesting that the Yorkshire man the Frenchman yeah <laughs> Yeah, but he yeah. said Tis- tissues. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wrote down a question. Now, it was answered afterwards because this was in one of the episodes and it, it, she hadn't a- appeared yet. I forgot Beverly existed and I was wondering why there was no medic. <laughs> I wrote down, does this team, do they not have a bones? What's happening yeah. here? But then yeah, Beverly yeah. turned up, so that was answered. Like uh, Beverly. Oh, I, here. You love, what you, actually, I w- I'm going to ask you through the, the cast of characters if you like which ones you like and which you don't. Well, go on. Uh, okay, so this is an actual question, genuinely, right? Right. So okay. the term "red shirts," yes. right? Ha- is that's like a term now that people use for like characters that die, right? Yes. Yeah. Di- so did did Star Trek did the star did Starfleet change their 
uniform color coordination yes, in, re- in was it in response to red people red shirts dying a lot? I don't and then they know if it's response to red shirts. They couldn't dying get people to sign um, up because they were like, "Well, no, if I put the red shirt on as a as a novice, yeah. I will die." So they made so, all the the leaders yeah. wear them, so people would be like, "See, yeah. not, red shirts don't die." Yeah. In, yeah, so command used to wear um, yellow, which now is engineering. Um, blue is for science and medics. So for, na- in T and G, blue is for science and medics. Uh, red is for command and tactical. And yeah, but though mind you, a blue and a yellow can still be in command. There's nothing stopping it. But usually the tactical ones are in charge for you know yeah yeah, all yeah, the yeah. reasons. Um, but yeah, in the original series, um, yellow, or technically it was actually green, believe it or not, but the lighting in the studio made it look like yellow. Yellow was uh, command, uh, red was engineering, because if you remember Scotty, and blue was still medicine, and and Spock was still blue as well. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure if they did for that reason, but even then, if you look at over all the series, reds were not really that much higher um it's it's more of a meme than anything it's oh, yeah, of, no no the, i w- yeah. the, i wasn't i don't think that's actually why they changed the yeah. color coordination but then they kind of they changed uniform again for this movie yeah they have the they're all the just wearing black stuff. with yeah, little yeah. bits of the color on but them. The, the red is still in the shirt no yeah it's still the colors yeah, are still yeah. there but they're all wearing yeah. like a more yeah similar and i believe they actually didn't have costumes um for this movie made, they borrowed it from DS9. Oh. Um, well, so you see, I spotted, I fi- I spotted yeah. that in my own. Nobody yeah, had we to briefly point see that to the <laughs> TNG uniform as well. Um, at the beginning, when Picard is like in the Borg cube thing in his dream thing, we see him in the his original uniform. Hmm. Um, and yeah, um, I have an f- another observation. Go on. Two more. Number one, uh, in the couple of episodes I watched, Picard does this really lazy little finger thing whenever he says engage. And it yeah. looks really gay and really, yeah. really stupid. He just Some goes, point, yeah. engage. <laughs> <laughs> it's this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, but it's more like half assed as well. Like he's not, he can't yeah. be arsed, like f- fully pointing. He just kind of flicks. He just this little, Actually, little flick thing. Funny. <laughs> Talking about Picard, there's a quick thing. Um, you so you've watched some of the first season, then. Um, yeah. Have you noticed what Picard does when he sits down? No. He pulls his. He does this. He like he pulls his clothes down when he sits down like that. Okay. Because at the time the jumpsuit was um like really bad for riding up, so he did that every time. But by the time the second season came around, it was a two piece, so it wasn't riding up anymore. But at that stage, people were so used to the character doing it. He just kept he doing it. it. Oh. And it's called the Picard Maneuver. It's so good. And, and the thing is, though, there is actually a Picard Maneuver in the show as well, which is when you take a ship into, um, like, warp speed and then quickly come out of warp speed because if you do it quick enough, you'll have an image of two ships in the sky and they'll shoot at the wrong one. That. The card came up with that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Observation number seventy-five from me watching Star Trek. I think is this a because th- okay, so I've only seen say like the Abrams movies and then a bunch of random episodes of this. TNG, yeah. um, but it seems like there's often a situation in Star Trek whereby the captain uh, gets kidnapped or. Uh, taken by the enemy somehow so the commander number one becomes acting captain or whatever and then that person Riker or spock or whoever is like oh let's put i'm putting a team together i'm leading the away team we're going to get the captain back and then somebody usually a woman on the ship has to go you can't go anywhere you're the you're the captain now you're you have to stay on the ship somebody else is going to have to i'll lead the away team or something yeah. You're like, all right, damn it, fine. But then they proceed to send every single other head of every other department on the ship 
on yeah, this super yeah. dangerous away mission. They send yeah. the head of, the head of engineering, the head of medicine, the head of fucking nav or whatever. They send like yeah. all the other important characters, and it's like yeah. surely they should stay on the ship as well. And it's not like the <laughs> other people on the ship aren't capable. They're well, all, like the entire ship is full of like very well trained, capable scientists you know yeah. experts in the I field just, like. I just noticed it because it happened when Picard became a Borg in the episode it happened with Riker yeah. Riker was like I'm going in I've got to do this and then I think uh, Deanna was like you can't leave you're the captain now you have to stay on the ship so he sends Geordi and Data and Worf and like all the other heads of all the other departments but the same thing happens in one of Abrams Star Trek movies with Spock yeah, or maybe it's there. No, it is. Yeah, the I'm pretty sure Spock becomes acting captain or whatever while um, you, you Chris Pine, what's his character's name, Captain Kirk, Kirk gets uh, <laughs> is like captured or whatever, and the exact same thing happens when you're one that Spock is in a relationship with has to stop and be like, no, you can't go. You're Spock now, or you're a captain now. <laughs> <laughs> You're sorry, you. It's you, a title. You're, no, you're, Kirk, yeah. you can't. You're Spock now. You're acting. You're acting Spock, so you can't go anywhere. I just say, is that like it? Does that happen a lot in Star Trek? Is that a, a, um, just a I thing? I mean, look, the whole idea of like sending off like the heads off to do stuff happens a lot. Like the captain very often goes out. Now, I will say TNG was a little bit better. They often sent down like Riker instead with some other people. But yeah, Picard certainly takes a few away missions as well. Um, I mean, look, the reality is that they want, you know, like cast to be on screen, you know. No, 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 I, I understand that. It's yeah. just like <laughs> that particular instance of like... Oh, the whether captain, someone takes over. Captain it gets happens, kidnapped. And it then... happens once in a while, but it's it's really only during big moments in the show, like... Yeah, but then is that... Yeah. Uh, could they not just argue that with the captain? Like, sorry, you're the captain. You can't go on this dangerous mission. You have to stay yeah, here on the ship. Like, yeah. And, but then and the captain be like, shut up on the, the captain. <laughs> you've watched the first episode of... Um, <laughs> to be fair, the episodes I have... You watched the first episode of TNG, didn't you? The episodes so, I... Yeah, yeah. I watched the first six or seven. Yeah, the, and like, he makes a point as saying like, you know, um, because, uh, you know, number one, you know, I like to do what I want on my ship. I don't like being told what to do. And Bragg is like, well, look, I'm your number two and I am in charge of... I'm telling you when you shouldn't yeah. be doing something stupid. In fairness, the um what I have seen of the next generation, Picard seems to quite often stay on the ship. Yeah. He does quite often he just he does sit there and kinda like coordinate things while Riker is running around having sex with aliens or whatever it is he he does all the time. Yeah, people Shooting always talk bullets. about like Kirk <laughs> being the wink, big wink, player wink. of aliens. <laughs> and he does like have like sex. Quite a, a decent amount in the original show, not as big as people like to make out. I think people just kind of overinflate it because, oh, sex in the sixties, woohoo! But um, but I think Riker definitely um is definitely more the horn dog of the yeah Star Trek. yeah I think so yeah, yeah. okay I have a couple more little questions just to Star Trek in general. Number one, where is where on the Enterprise is the command deck? That they're always at in. the very top, but but it's 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 a little bulb thing at the top, at the top of the saucer. Yeah, but they separate the saucer section in the movie, and they're not in it. They're in a they're in the command deck, and they're looking at the saucer. Uh, oh, that's yeah, that's just at the base, uh, of the under underneath. So there's two, yeah. it, so it's not at the top of the. It's they, there's, there's two bridges. Oh, yeah. they have like a, a backup. Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. That makes more sense now because I, w- yeah. I always just assumed it was like just at the front of the ship. Yeah. It's also but... the captain's yacht, which is a thing that's just underneath the saucer that can be popped out as well. Okay, 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 okay. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Uh, I had one more thing. Um, why, why did they drop the C in Star Trek? Sorry, what? Why did they spell Trek without a C? What? In the in Star Trek. Yeah. But isn't, there, isn't there a C in Trek? No. There's no C in the word Trek? Like trekking. Is that spelt with a C? No. No, it's not. Alright, never mind. I answered my own question. <laughs> I didn't know how to spell Trek. <laughs> okay. Alright. So why okay. did they why is there no C in the word Trek? <laughs> it does sound like it needs a C. Um anyway. We'll go on to the next section.
Jesus moment. So what's your Jesus moment? Oh, it's definitely the sex dungeon. <laughs> it has to be. I mean, Jesus, that came out of nowhere. I was <laughs> like, whoa, this Borg Queen and Data are into some mad shit. It's very Jeez. clearly they spend. And then, you know what it is? She, like, kisses him and whatever. It's like, when's the last time you fucking had a wank, Data? And Data's like, it's been 18 years since I touched myself. Eight years. Eight years, 600 and blah, 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 whatever. Um, and then she kisses him, and then it they then we don't see them again for like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't turn it's, off the rest of the hey movie. Man, they, man, think about it. If you're powered by electronics, <laughs> I think the only reason they stopped was because Picard came in. <laughs> <laughs> they were still going at it, and then they were like, "Shit, yeah. shit, no, Picard's coming. <laughs> we gotta act like we're like world domination. Remember that. Come on, let's go." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's definitely that. That was funny. It was. What's your um, Jesus moment? I mean, I think it's um, some of the lines, to be honest. Um, like, Worf, assimilate this. Yeah. Mm. Or, actually, you know what my Jesus moment is? It is the meme. It's the fact that Picard tricked a bunch of Borg into, uh, a, into a hollow program, into, like, a 1920s hollow program, and then used a light gun to kill them like because this is the thing like they always say how why do hum why are humans able to resist the borg so well all the time it's like that's it because the borg tried to predict and work around them and then like destroy but like the borg could never ever predict that a captain of a ship would trick a bunch of borg into a hollow program of the 1920s pick In up a mini which... gun in which he <laughs> plays a character who is a, you know, a noir detective called Dickie. Yeah. And you were really shocked when I said, yeah, no, that's part of the show. I just, no, it may, because I, I was like, did, is this just, did he just invent, because it dawned on me, I was like, this is, because he was calling out, he was like, computer, go to chapter 13, and it switched to like the ballroom scene with Johnny Schnockta nose in the background or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. This is he is this this is pre programmed from previously. Like this is not like yeah. he just he like ran in and like set up a this is not a combat situation. Like this no, is what? just John Luke uses the holodeck for his own like personal pleasure. He just goes in there every once in a while and runs out an entire pre programmed scenario where he pretends to be a detective from nineteen twenties yeah. Earth. It's, <laughs> it's a big like, theme, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it is kinda cool. And it makes total yeah. sense. It's like, yeah, he'd do that, wouldn't he? That's yeah, exactly yeah. what he does with his spare time. He drinks scotch, yeah. he reads Moby Dick, and he said, pretends like, he's it was a like detective. A child, it was like a childhood um, thing, reading the books. Like, he loved reading those books, so, like, of course he would. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 no, that's cool. That yeah. was going to be, that was my, if it hadn't been for the sex dungeon, I would have said that for my answer as well, to be honest. Yeah. It's fun. The fact that he just, like, shoots him down, like, there's no way, like, any other race would have thought of that. <laughs> and the Borg's just like, what the fuck? But yeah, I think that's definitely my RJ at the moment. Um, yeah, I think we go into the next section then. Yes, Mr. Frodo. It's over now. Right, on you've watched the um, you know, the Kelvin universe, but now you've watched a bit more of the original timeline. In general, um, episodes and movie-wise, what do you think? Um, I'm, I don't, it's grand. I, I don't think I, I'm not really in a rush to go back or to, like, start watching all of Star Trek now. Yeah. Um, I think the movie, this one, was a lot easier for me to watch because it, I think in terms of the way it's structured and the way it's filmed in particular is a lot more like modern sensibilities in terms of film filmmaking and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think the show, at least what I've seen, is still kind of shot the way OG Star Trek was in terms of like the... the you know the the layout of, the of cameras, scenes and the, yeah. the, the, the where the cameras are in fixed places and stuff like yeah. that, um, which is grand. I don't I don't hate it like, but it's um, 
Yeah, it's it's. I, I look. I mean, honestly, I think at this point, like any network TV series that has twenty seven hundred episodes a season, there's going to be some really bad ones, and there's going to be some very good ones. It's you yeah. know what I mean. It's rare that anything <laughs> is like impeccably well made for all twenty two episodes of a season like yeah. that. There's going to be some episodes that are just throw away. Like we need to fill some fucking. We need to fill out an episode here and just throw in some shit. Um. So yeah, it's grand. You know, I I liked. I thought the movie was actually pretty good. To be honest, I liked a lot of it. I liked the. I get why you like it. I, I, honestly, as soon as the movie was like, "Hey, we're traveling back in time," I was like, "Oh, this is why it's Dan's favorite Star Trek movie." Okay, I get it now. Yeah, there's time travel involved. Of course, Dan likes this one. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> there's a bit of that going on. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's good. It's you know, I'm not um, I'm not gonna walk around calling myself a Star Trek fan or anything. Yeah, just yet. But you don't. But I don't. Because I know before you were quite, I know you've seen some episodes before randomly, and you were a little bit bored by them in the past. Yeah, I was still like, like I was saying, the first episode I watched in the run up to this, the Q Who one, I was bored watching yeah. that. Um, yeah, for the most part, and I had you don't seen like Nancy as Q. I had seen him in because I actually one of the episodes I watched in season one was he was in one of them where he like put yeah. humanity on trial or whatever. I think it's one of the episodes, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I had so I I knew who he was. Um, Kind of. I mean, I kind of forgot, and then you were like, yeah. "Oh, he's this thing." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, he was the guy in that first episode." Um, yeah, it's yeah, I, yeah. Overall, I'm I'm okay with Star Trek. It's fine. You can yeah. go ahead. Would you like? We were talking kind of about this. Uh, so the Kelvin timeline um, is still in the, um, the original series era. Would you like seeing like a recasting and have a TNG Next Generation era in the Kelvin universe? If it was done in the style of like the Abrams movies, like yeah. in a film, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't hate it. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the Abrams movies either, to be honest. I liked the yeah. first one, and I think the rest of them were all fine. I thought the third the one was actually part. quite good. Yeah, I, I know a I lot of people. The second one. I know an awful lot of people didn't like Into Darkness and thought Beyond was really good. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I see the thing like Into Darkness. I think is one of those things where like. Because they, because it was Wrath of Khan essentially, and they like reversed things and changed stuff around. A lot of people were like, "This is fucking." They just remade. It was the it's the Force Awakens thing again, where people are just like, "They just remade a New Hope and changed some shit." It's the same fucking movie. Um, whereas I had never seen Wrath of Khan, I didn't know what was. It meant nothing to me, so I was like, "This is interesting." Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd I'd be yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I won't. I won't like recoil in horror. If somebody ever suggests watching Star Trek again, I'll put it to you yeah, that yeah. way. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, good stuff. Um, yeah, I enjoy First Contact. I think First Contact is one of my favorite Star Trek movies. Um, and TNG being my f- second favorite um, Star Trek show, um, it's always kind of good to slip back into them. Um, DS9 for life, bitches. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's a good movie. Um, I think it holds. I definitely recommend people watching TNG and giving first contact a go. Um, after the first movie, Generations, which I thought was a bit pants, to be honest, um, this was pretty good. So yeah, definitely recommend it. Um, if you're into Star Trek or if you want to get into Star Trek, do uh there's loads of new star trek it's, it's like a new golden nature star trek there's a whole bunch of shows out now um well, yeah that's that's kind of my word on it really um owen why are you watching next week on oh, next week splitting hairs is back splitting hairs is we're doing back, another baby. splitting hairs on this time this time people may take our lives they may take our podcast but they'll never take braveheart we're doing braveheart versus rob roy um which i don't think either of us have ever seen rob roy i think i've seen maybe i yeah i'm pretty sure i haven't ever seen rob roy um but i've seen braveheart a bajillion times Easily a bajillion times, and I'm excited to watch it again because I love Braveheart. In fact, your cousin has like a helmet from the movie. Mm, Yes, I have family. I have 
personal family history with the movie Braveheart, which we will discuss yeah. in Splitting Hairs yes. when we return in... Uh, Where I weeks. will defend Braveheart. <laughs> yeah, because I hate my family. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, folks, um, give us a like, share, subscribe, all of that. Suggest this to your friends. You know, you know the deal. Um, we'll, I think we'll love you and leave you. Astrolog. Did we grant?